It's closing day. Do some finger exercises and get ready to sign. Hey, South Florida, it's your realtor, Julio Gonzalez. Your closing starts several days ahead of the day you sign. In the earlier financing and due diligence videos, I mentioned several items that play a part in closing. In order to close, you must first clear all contingencies. What's a contingency? It's a contractual hurdle that protects the process at different steps along the way. The contingency most buyers are familiar with is the due diligence period. By the end of due diligence, anything that needed to have been discovered and discussed needs to be completed and that clears that hurdle. There's a loan contingency where the lender has to complete their approval and funding process. And when all contingencies are met, there is a clear to close indicating that everyone is ready. During this time frame, you also need to get your homeowner's insurance ready. Reach out to your insurance agent and provide them with all pertinent information so that they can prepare a quote for you. They will likely ask you for the inspection that was completed earlier. Once you complete your review of the quote, complete the purchase with an effective date of the closing date and you're set. Once the clear to close is provided, the title company, closing company, or closing attorney will prepare a HUD-1 or a closing statement. This is a complete accounting of all costs or monies out, funds or monies in, and their disposition. The HUD-1 will show your purchase amount, deposits, lender costs, title costs, realtor commissions, etc., 
and where everything goes. For the buyer, one of the items to look for is the cash to close line, which is the remaining amount of cash due. Let's say you're providing a 20% down payment. When you made your offer, there was some earnest money deposit, say $5,000. On a $500,000 home, a 20% down payment would be $100,000. The bank provides $400,000, you already provided $5,000, so you need to provide another $95,000 at time of closing. This is not assuming any other closing costs to keep this example simple. You will typically provide the cash to close by wire transfer, although some transactions still use cashier's checks. Here's a very, very important warning for wire transfers. Do not ever, ever, ever process a wire transfer, regardless of how you got the information, without picking up the phone, speaking with a closing attorney or processor, and verifying the account information. There is unfortunately significant fraud targeting the closing process, and once the funds are wired, it can be nearly impossible to get the funds back. Something that is often overlooked is utilities. Now that you have a closing date, take the time to set up the transfer of utility services. You can schedule the closing date as the date for transfer for all utilities such as power, water, and gas. Since the seller's responsibility ends on the day of closing, they will often schedule service termination, so make sure you set up your transfers so you have utilities available when you enter your new home for the first time. Back to the actual day of closing, it was common in the past that the buyer and seller would come to the table and have a big signing. More often than not, closing happens separately and even on different days. Either way, as the buyer, get ready for hand cramps. Take a few moments to do some hand stretches before and again during signing. You will be signing a lot. There are fewer documents to sign if buying cash, but it's still a ton. At this point, you'll be handed your keys and congratulations are in order. Next time we'll be talking about moving in and close this series. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my social media and blog by clicking the link in my bio. Thanks and enjoy the sunshine.